I want you guys to understand that a, a party girl is always a party girl. <laughs> I'll never forget. I was at a hockey game in Vegas. I got excellent seats. I'm sitting um, right behind the hockey players, right? So I'm sitting behind the team. And um, I just hear like somebody yelling. I'm looking back and there's this older white lady. She lit. You know what I mean? She didn't apparently hit a, a couple of drinks and she turned up. She probably about like in her early 50s, lit, standing up, dancing, just doing too much. In general, too much. Like she could have been a 21 year old girl. She was still doing too much. But for a 55 year old woman, she was doing way too much. I looked at my assistant and my assistant was looking at me like shaking her head. And then she basically said something to the effect of once a whore, always a whore, <laughs> you know, which I was like, yeah, you foul. But it's true. You know, once a party girl, always a party girl, like they, they thrive and, and live on that scene. That's what they're seeking. They don't enjoy the simple things in life, like curling up on a couch with their man. They don't enjoy the, the simple relaxation of a barbecue at home just with their family. They don't enjoy the easy, calm parts of life, like playing a board game. If a woman can't play a board game, then something's wrong. She needs too much stimulation. She's probably not going to be a good mother or a good spouse. So she won't change if she's a party girl. And even more dangerous is if you're an introverted person or you're very much so the opposite of a party girl, you're really going to have a lot of issues as your relationship grows uh, time-wise, not as it grows, but as it progresses in time. Because the things she's going to want to do and the people she's going to hang around are going to be in agreement with her mindset and her lifestyle that she's had before she met you, which is happy hour, and you know, drinking and all these things. And you're like, well, I don't drink. I don't go to happy hour. I don't like bars. And so now she's like, oh, okay, all right, that's all right. I'm just gonna go for a little bit. She's going without you. She's not gonna change who she is. She's just gonna go without you. And then that's gonna draw a wedge between you and also who she meeting while she's out at this happy hour. Or you did looking hella single. And even if she don't look single, it's not like them savages out there care anyways. So point is you don't want to be that misaligned with the female to where you're like oh opposites attract you could say that if you want you could say opposites attract but if the girls are alcoholic and you don't ever drink alcohol and you don't even know what it tastes like that's opposites but that's a big gap to where y'all ain't gonna come together and it's probably gonna be a problem opposites attract i don't think that's a very intelligent phraseology for relationships if we're being honest if opposites attract that's like saying okay i'm a muslim she's an atheist we attract i'm deeply religious and she's deeply anti-religious she doesn't even believe god exists we attract think about how foolish these common phrases are and that's why you need the ism to break this stuff down because we're not just taking the world as it's been delivered to us which is non-organic gmo you dig a lot of nonsense opposites attract. Give me a break. It's silly. The girl's tall. The guy's short. Opposites attract. The tall girl wants the short guy. Opposites attract. Right? Think about how ludicrous this stuff is. And this is just talking in this one small area of life, which is romance. But you hear these kind of lies being perpetrated about so many things in life. And that's why it's important to take a, a second look and ask yourself constantly, is that true? You hear this stuff, is that true? And a lot of times you find like, no, nah, that's not true at all. Another thing that you really want to be aware of, or rather I should say cautious of, is if she has uh, substance abuse problems, be it alcohol, drugs, hookah, or what have you, or even caffeine. If, if she's doing something in an addictive way, you need to be mindful and just playing the slots, slot machines. If she's doing something in an addictive way, you need to be mindful of it and ask yourself, what is the outcome of this behavior carried forward in an extreme way? And the reason I say in an extreme way, because you have a girl who likes to drink alcohol. Well, when she gets stressed or angry or depressed or sad, that probably is going to increase her reliance on that vice. So how does that manifest in your relationship now? If the girl likes to play slot machines and gamble and then she gets stressed, 
Does that mean she's gambling away the family fortune now? These are the things that are not going to change and generally are not going to get better. She's not going to be able to handle her alcohol better with time. She's going to drink more alcohol and handle it terribly because she's starting to become older. It's wearing away in brain cells. So these are all the things that you need to take to their logical conclusion. But most importantly, you need to be able to identify them, which is to say, I know women who are actual alcoholics and have friends who don't know that, that the girl's an alcoholic. You see what I'm saying? So that's the challenge is that their vices, because of the kind of company they keep, they might not even be aware that they have that vice because in a place like Las Vegas, for example, you can go out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and drink every single night. And in many cases, the alcohol is free. You wouldn't know that you have an alcoholism problem because you're always at the party and naturally people are going to drink in the club. But you move out of Las Vegas and you move into, say, Denver, Colorado with your wife. So you took your wife from Vegas. You got a job in Denver, Colorado. And now she's like getting this itch and she can't really figure out what it is. And then she realized, oh, I think I want to go to happy hour. And then now it looks like a problem. It didn't look like a problem before when she was in, in Club Hakkasan. She was in excess, turned up with the girls taking selfies. It didn't seem like a problem that she was drinking every night because she was at a party. But now she's going to find ways to drink every night. Now you're like, damn, she's just going to the bar. It's a problem. So this whole lecture is about how to identify these things in advance to protect yourself, to correctly categorize the woman so that she doesn't get out of the right category or so that you don't put her in the wrong category, meaning put a one hitter quitter into the main girl category because inevitably in all these cases, it's going to manifest into major problems. And it's not like you can't deal with it when it happens. But the question is, would you rather fix a flat tire or not have a flat tire? I'd rather not have a flat tire. And that's what we're dealing with here. And I also want to encourage you guys. I'm not going to say trust your gut. I'm going to say do what you know is right, which is to say there's a lot of times you're laying down with a woman and you know, I shouldn't be with this one. I shouldn't even be around this woman. Stop then. Stop. Right? Like, stop. That's what I'm telling you is stop. And, and it's never too late to stop. I mean, there have been times I've been out on a date with a girl and I was like, you know what? We don't line up. Hey, can I get you an Uber? No, you don't. Want me? I'll, I'll get one. Okay. Well, I'm going to get me an Uber because I'm done. You get like that. And it's okay. But what you should never do is persist in error. Like when you realize you're on the wrong path, stop and turn around. That's what I'm saying to you. Anything you have of value, people will try to steal it from you. <laughs> and that's why, you know, it, hell, it's, it's sometimes a good thing to try to try your best to look broke. You feel me? Good Lord. This is a wicked world. People don't. I was just telling the chick this recently. I say, you know. I got to be cautious around women because it's so much easier for them to steal a million dollars than to make a million dollars. Like I see these women clearly like they ain't about to make a million dollars, but they could steal a million. They could hit you with a lawsuit, an allegation, make you settle out of court. Out of court. Yeah, it's, they, they rather steal a million because that's the only way they're going to touch a million.